let's talk about skin pathologies or diseases of the skin. Now, I can't cover all skin pathologies and actually dermatologists, they have this whole like language of ways to describe different types of like skin diseases and what we call lesions or lesions in general are what we taught in, I mean, different, regardless of where they are on the body, it's like some sort of injury or something abnormal on the body. So skin pathologies, well, we did talk about one skin pathology and remember that ultraviolet light, it has energy and when it encounters chemicals, what can it do? It can break the bonds between chemicals, right? Or atoms. And we covered when we talk about tanning and, uh, and, and also why it's important to wear sunscreen. This is what we have here. So we have those melanocytes, they produce that compound melanin Remember that melanin is a chemical, it has bonds, but the melanin is produced by melanocytes. This helps to absorb the energy from the ultraviolet light and protect your DNA and things like collagen and elastin from, the, from UV light breaking the bonds in these chemicals that you need for your skin and your cells. Now there's other things that can happen. So there are skin cancers. So say these UV rays or something else cause uh, causes a lot of DNA damage in the cell, causing it to become cancerous, and the cell doesn't undergo apoptosis. Well, then two types of skin cancers are squamous and basal cell carcinoma. So with squamous cell carcinoma, what we have here is like, it looks very, oh, it looks like an open sore, right? Very ulcerated, and sometimes it's like, it's less common than this uh, related skin cancer, or another type of skin cancer called basal cell carcinoma. But what we have here is that, yeah, this is one you definitely want to get checked out, especially like if you have it, it looks like a wound, but this isn't going to heal. It's going to stay like that. And the thing is that with cancers, you want to get treated early so it doesn't spread to other parts of your body where it's harder to treat and hard to get rid of those cancer cells. And what we, this expect, this kind of like scaly appearance and this ulcerated looking kind of lesion. This is what we call actinic keratosis, and this kind of looks flaky and open and kind of nasty, right? And then basal cell carcinoma. So what we have here is that compared to this open looking uh, and this kind of raw looking squamous cell carcinoma, notice that's kind of like, it kind of keeps it intact and it has this kind of pearly look and it's kind of pinkish, it's kind of swollen has all these blood vessels. Of course, this is how it looks if you have like not too much melanin. It, I'm, that's why I'm eager to look to um, see that doctor who is trying to see, um, trying to show what um, like what skin pathologies look like in people who have more melanin in their skin. But yeah, this is what it would look like in someone with fair skin. But this is the most common skin cancer, and the so the cool thing is that or not cool thing. Unlike squamous cell carcinoma and other types of skin cancer, it has a low risk of spreading. So even though it's growing and it's kind of having this little small tumor here, it's typically benign and doesn't spread. And which cell, which stratum do you think it occurs in? Well, for the sake of time, we don't have a question for that. We'll, we'll skip the top hat question for that. But hint, what stratum of the epidermis also has basal or something that sounds like basal in it? Hmm, maybe the stratum basal. So the cells that grow, the, so if one of those cells over there becomes cancerous, it can end up with basal cell carcinoma. So the cool thing about that is that even though it's the most common skin cancer, it has a, the low risk of spreading, means that it's easily curable. What they do is like, okay, they say, oh, it's basal cell carcinoma. So what the dermatologist might do is take a circular scalpel and just cut it out and they tell you to to they cover it up and t tell you how to um what's the aftercare and how to promote the growth and the healthy skin over that and you typically don't need chemotherapy or anything past that like they look at that under they send it to pathologists it typically stays in place so if you got the cancer out by scooping it out you're good so yeah of all if you <laughs> If, ever, if it was guaranteed that everyone would develop cancer during their life and you could choose which type of cancer you would get, it would be basal cell carcinoma. So if you, it's a very survivable, people very de, rarely de, die from basal cell carcinoma. But a deadlier type of skin cancer is melanoma. 
So mel melanoma, hmm, sounds like melanin, right? And melanin is produced by melanocytes, and that's not coincidental. So this is the deadliest form of skin cancer. And if you talk, talked about like, okay, how many people die from different types of skin cancer, this is the deadliest one. And if you were here for the last class, you might remember that the, our, set, our case with Sam and the dermatologist say like, tanning beds increase your risk of skin cancer. He was like, she's gonna get to develop skin cancer over her lifetime. So this is why it's like, you want to protect your skin against all that UV radiation. So the good thing about mel is that if you detect it early, it's very curable. So only 2% of people who develop melanoma, or early stage melanoma die uh, after five years. But if it starts to spread to these, pro so we don't talk about lymph nodes in detail until next semester, but there are parts of your lymphatic system and sometimes then it's often a common site for cancer cells to spread and hang out in. So if cancer cells go past that initial melanoma and go into your lymphatic system, then survival drops to maybe like, okay, two out of three people survive. And then at very poor survival, once you go, if it actually starts to spread or metastasize. So this is why melanoma is very deadly and why it's very important to catch it early. The earlier you catch it, the more likely that someone will survive. So this is why you might hear the ABCDEs of skin cancer. So this is what we have. I'm going to teach you the ABCDEs of melanoma. And what we have here is a benign. So this looks like a basal cell carcinoma, but what we have here is asymmetry. So notice that it has this kind of like raised part right here. And this part right here, it doesn't have as much of a border and it's lighter color. So this is means like, okay, it's probably malignant melanoma border is the border very clear or is it kind of faded and kind of looking like a watercolor painting where you have some like light spots some dark spots so you want if it if it's like this this looks like a, just a regular mole right here and color so i mean people think like they see a mole and they're like oh my god it's melanoma well these are again clear border and the color is uniform in this mole over here when this mal malignant melanoma, we see like, okay, there's some like kind of light spots, some dark spots, some reddish spots, some black spots. So if there's multiple colors, that's a warning sign. And diameter. So do I want you to know exact numbers, but I've heard the rule, good rule of thumb is kind of like the, uh, the head of an eraser, of the diameter of an eraser on a pencil. So that's like, if it grows bigger than that, that's kind of a little big, for a uh, mole, so that's why. But again, there are some moles that are bigger than the the eraser on a pencil, so don't worry or just get checked. And then evolving. So is this something that has all of a sudden appeared and starting to grow over weeks, or is this something that you've had over like and maybe it's grown one millimeter over ten years of your life? So if it starts to change rapidly, like in the matter of weeks or days, I, and actually like. In 2019, I had a skin cancer scare because like, I, I should actually put up the pictures, but I actually had a spot that grew like within months. It was started small and then it started to grow big and then got checked out. Thankfully, it wasn't malignant melanoma, but the dermatologist says, hey, let's cut it out anyway because it was growing way too big to be, or like the rate of growth was concerning to her. So that's why she cut it out. But hey, I'm very, again, if you catch it early, then no problem. And she said, she sent it to pathologists. They looked at it and they said, no, it's not melanoma. So I'm like, whew, bullet dodged.